Uh, Manchester United have agreed a £47 million deal for Inter Milan goalkeeper Andre Nana, with the structure of the deal being ratified today. I don't want to dwell on this for too long because we've talked a lot about Manchester United and a lot about Andre Nana over the course of the last few weeks. He's going to be the Manchester United goalkeeper. It's going to happen. He's going to go on their um, US tour. When does that leave? Uh, leaves later this week. Um, I don't think it's necessarily guaranteed that he flies out immediately because I think there's some paperwork that needs sorting out visa issues as well. But he will join that tour at some point. It's going to be a, a five-year contract, new number one, as you say. But it does have a sort of domino effect because we know that Dean Henderson uh, has been back with United for a, a week or so now, but probably not part of their long-term plans. I think he'll end up joining Nottingham Forest on a permanent transfer, which I think probably will be a good move for all concerned. Uh, Nathan Bishop, highly rated young goalkeeper, Sunderland made an approach for him a few weeks ago for a low move. United blocked that because they were sorting out the situation with De Gea. I think he'll now be allowed to make that move again. A good move for him to go and play regularly. So who's going to be the number two? In the championship. Well, that's the point. They're they, they going to have to bring in a new number two. At the moment, it will probably be Tom Heaton. Can't they keep Tom Heaton? Or well, is- I, I think... I, I think the plan is to bring in somebody a bit younger and Tom Heaton will then go to Luton. They're still very keen. OK. Uh, West Ham are in talks with Fulham over a move for midfielder Jao Polina. We've been talking about this for a very long time. Uh, Polina is seen as the Hammers' top target to replace Declan Rice. I have to say, if they can get him for £40 million, they've done a very, very good job because he is a terrific player. Brilliant tackler, brilliant at progressing the football. He was ad- added a superb dimension to the Fulham midfield last season. He was he was probably um, the centrepiece, I think, of, of their lineup last season. Yeah, and this is a worry for Fulham if they do lose him. I think £40 million would very much be the starting figure and obviously Fulham will work upwards, but I was told yesterday there is every chance this deal gets done. Uh, Anton Alvarez, uh, Edson Alvarez, another player, uh, Ajax is also on their list. So too James Ward-Prowse, but as you say, I think at the moment, uh, Paulinho, very much a top target. We know that there have been two bids from Saudi Arabia for Mitrovic and he's pushing for that move. Marco Silva himself hasn't committed to a, a new contract yet. I would suggest if they lose Paulinho and Mitrovic, Mitrovic. It could be a, a much different season for Fulham than we saw last year. But one piece of good news, Willian, having looked like he could be tempted away to join Nottingham Forest, he now is set to sign his contract, so he will be staying at Fulham. Because at, at one stage, they weren't giving him what he wanted, were they? I mean, it's and I think Marco a... Silva stepped in personally and said, look, we need to keep this guy. Well, he was excellent for them last season, I thought. He was terrific. He, I mean, and I was surprised by that, because obviously when he was at Arsenal, it didn't make an impact at all. But yeah, at Fulham, he was, he was brilliant for them. He was, and actually I think during the course of this summer he's been offered back to Chelsea uh, as well, but Chelsea weren't keen to to take up that option. Different profile now of the type of player they're trying to bring in. So uh, I think that's, that's good news for Fulham, but there's, there's still a bit of work to be done. They lost uh, Manuel Solomon to uh, Tottenham did. because they had him on loan from Shakhtar and then Shakhtar ended up, he, his contract ran out, so he went to, to Tottenham Hotspur, as I understand it. I don't think Marco Silva was too disappointed with that, but he will want some uh, new players into the club. Yeah, he will. Um, you know, William is, is just the first step. I think they've also got an interest in Igor, uh, a defender at Fiorentina, yeah. but Brighton want him as well. Interesting to see what path he decides he to go the down. Conference League final, didn't he? Correct. Yeah. Um, Forty million for Polina. Is that for his left leg? Says Harry. <laughs> uh, is that, that's why I said at the top of the the bit the piece. You know, if they get him for forty million quid, they've done a very very good job because he is that good. Um, the Lukaku situation was fascinating, wasn't it? Over the weekend, he seemed to do himself <laughs> out of a Amazing. move to Inter Milan. But you say do him out of uh, a move to Inter Milan. Daniele Fisichella, who uh, is an Italian journalist, told us yesterday that he was... Um, he, He's actually organised a better remuneration package at Juventus, an extra £4 million a year. So, I mean, he's done well out of it, Romelu Lukaku. But he has burnt his bridges with Inter Milan as a result of that. I mean, he's fallen out with Simone Inzaghi. Um, and I think one of the things that came out of the conversation we had yesterday is that Allegri thinks he'll be the main man. He's more direct style of football compared to what Inzaghi wants to play. But ultimately, it's completely it's completely ruined his relationship with Inter and the Inter fans. And this is someone who's come out publicly and said he would never join uh, Juventus or AC Milan. Because the massive. So it'll be interesting to see how he's received by Juve fans. I guess they may see it they've stolen a, a march on one of their rivals. But it was an unwanted headache for Chelsea because you may remember he was given that extended leave to sort out a, a deal. He was due to report back to training, I think, today. That's now been knocked back till tomorrow. He won't be going on Chelsea's US tour, which tells you that they want him gone as quickly as possible. Uh, they're still looking for a fee of around £40 million. Look like Juventus will 
pay that and of course he's turned down a move to Saudi Arabia over the last few weeks yeah, as well. Yeah, it's not 40, it's 33 plus 5 I think. Yeah, uh, so not far off. Um, but uh, more than Inter more are, are going to play, uh, which is why um, I think the deal will be done pretty quickly now. I think Chelsea have sort of accepted that that's all they're going to get for Lukaku and the good news for them is, is they'll get him off their wage bill because he's been He's. I mean, he hasn't worked out at all, has it? That hundred million pound move. I was going to say, is that a fifty, sixty million pound hit they've taken plus the wages on on Lukaku? Well, Disastrous I mean, he won't sit on the balance sheet like that because I suppose he's been away for a couple of years on loan. But it's it's it didn't work out, did it? For whatever reason, um, Newcastle. Eddie Howe was interesting over the weekend. He was saying it's not what we want to do in terms of transfers this uh, summer. It's what we need to do. They're being hampered a little bit by FFP. He sort of came out quite clearly about that after their friendly against Gateshead at the weekend, suggesting that they need to be a little bit more prudent because FF, the FFP constraints, one of the big issues has been, and we sort of alluded to this on the show yesterday, that behind the scenes when the new ownership took over the commercial deals that had been done previously weren't anywhere near what you would expect to sort of garner in as a football club so their income isn't as high as many people would expect for a Newcastle uh, team that have got a great brand and a, a great sort of reach across the world actually the commercial uh, income was particularly light he's looking at Harvey Barnes but he's got to offload Alan St Maximab first yeah, and Saudi Arabia looks the most likely uh, route for that. It was interesting as well. He was asked directly uh, about loaning players from Saudi Arabia, loaning players from uh, Pifone clubs, and he didn't rule it out. Ruben Neves, of course, has gone over there. Ronaldo has also been mentioned in the past. I don't see Eddie Howe entertaining Ronaldo, but I think it would be maybe courting unwanted attention if they did start loaning players that from Saudi Arabia. That would cause a load of controversy. I think so, yeah. Um, if, 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 if Ruben Neves is getting paid by one club in Saudi Arabia and being loaned to another club in the UK that is owned by the same people, that would... Um, it would raise suspicions that it was being used to get around FFP, but the argument will be that Watford have you loaned players from Udinese before and Watford have taken players from Granada before and those three clubs have all sold players between the two, the, the three. And at one time, they're all owned by the same family. It's something that UEFA are, are trying to clamp down on. Uh, I think there's a, a ban in place between Brighton and Union St. Galois that they can't, they can't loan trade players now. between clubs. Yep. Aston Villa and their sister club as well. But obviously... Saudi Arabia doesn't come under the UEFA bracket. I don't think Newcastle will do it because I don't think they want the attention. But with Harvey Barnes, I, I never felt that this deal was quite as advanced as maybe had been reported because of the financial restraints that Newcastle are operating under. I think he's open to go going to St James's Park and playing in the Champions League. But I wouldn't rule West Ham out of that race either. We'll see what happens with them. Fabinho is on the brink of agreeing a £40 million to Al Ittihad. TalkSport understands. The brilliant's been left out of Liverpool's pre-season to, to negotiate his exit um, Southampton midfielder Romeo Lavia among the options for Liverpool we've talked about this a lot as well but it is one of the the, the many Premier League players that have now followed that route to Saudi Arabia uh, Bournemouth are in talks with AZ Alkmaar over a uh, move for left back Milos Kerketh uh, talks what understands Cherry is battling Lazio to sign the Hungarian international yeah, someone who's been on their radar for some time. I think they were, were keen to sign him in January, but he picked up an injury that scuppered that one. Looked as if it was a done deal at one stage with Lazio, but I think Bournemouth have always been there lurking in the background. And this is uh, this is a position they've identified that they really need to strengthen in the summer. I think their manager actually mentioned a centre midfield and, and a left back as his two priorities. So every chance this one could happen. I think it would be a big statement of intent if Bournemouth could beat a club of Lazio stature to a signing. We should mention Ethan Ampadu as well. Yeah. Looks like he's off to Leeds. Chelsea's in a longest permanent serving player. transfer. How long has he been there? Um, how long has he been there? It's a great question. I think he's been there for seven years, something like that. Incredible. Uh, but do you know how many games he's played? Go on. 12. <laughs> And uh, they got rid of Baba Rahman as well, finally, didn't they? Another <laughs> stalwart from, from Chelsea. But they've got a history of this. Who was the guy who went to Bristol City, Czech Republic centre-back? He was on their books Thomas for Gallas. a long time. And he played he played more games out on loan than he had for Chelsea. Lucas Piazon. <laughs> Tim, not, Tim, not Tim, business model, Tim Wade Bocke, Bakayoko. Incredible. The list is in endless. You forget mate. about all these players. But the list listen, is endless. A good signing for Leeds. I think he'll go there and probably play in midfield. And, and they need to start bringing players in because they've moved an awful lot on this summer. 